Hey guys, so let's talk about functions. Functions will generally look like this. You'll see an f followed by parentheses x and an equation. This is read as f of x is equal to x plus 1. The f here won't necessarily always be there. It could be a g, it could be an h, it could be something else. But just know that when you see something like this, a letter followed by parentheses and a variable is equal to something else that includes that variable, you're dealing with functions. What you generally do is take whatever number is given here and replace the variable in the equation with that number. So if this were 2, you would replace this x with 2. So f of 2 would be equal to 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. So sometimes you'll see a function nested within another function. So in this case, we have f of g of x. What you need to do in these cases is solve for the function on the inside of the parentheses first. So in this case, it would be g of x. Solve for that, take whatever that solution is, and then plug that into the variable for the f function. So for instance, we have solve for f of g of 1 here, with g of x being equal to x plus 2 and f of x equal to x cubed. What you would do is take the 1 here, and plug it into the x here. So you get g of 1 is equal to 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. Next up, you would take the 3 and plug that into the f function here. So then you would get f of 3 is equal to x cubed, which is 3 cubed, which is equal to 27. There's some other ways you might encounter functions on the SAT or ACT. For instance, here we have 5 on the outside of the function, f of x is equal to x plus 1. All you're doing here is multiplying the function by 5. So you're going to take whatever x plus 1 is, depending on the variable here, taking that answer and then multiplying it by 5. So for instance, if x were 2 here, you get 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. So f of 2 would be equal to 3, and then you would need to multiply this by 5. So since the 5 is out here, you'd get 5 times 3, which is equal to 15. So down in this example, you see another way you might encounter functions. Here we have f of a plus 2 is equal to x plus 1. All you need to do is take whatever is inside the parentheses and replace the variable with it. So that would give us a plus 2 plus 1. This simplifies to a plus 3. So when dealing with functions, you're ultimately going to deal with domains and ranges. Domains refer to the values of x that make a function real. So by that I mean we have, let's say f of x is equal to 2 over x plus 1. We know that when we're dealing with fractions here, we can't have the denominator equaling 0. So that means we can't have x equal to negative 1, because that'll be negative 1 plus 1, which equals 0. So the domain of f of x in this case, which is 2 over x plus 1, is all numbers aside from negative 1. We also can't have x values or domains that include numbers that'll make the function a negative square root. So let's say we have another function, f of x, which is equal to the square root in this case, let's just say x. That means that we can't have x's that are negative. So for this, the domain would be all positive numbers, including 0. So the range is just the y value to the domain's x. So the range refers to the real number results, or y values, of a function given a domain. So sometimes you'll deal with domain and range when it comes to a graph. In this case, we have this shape here on a Cartesian plane. The domain would be all the x values included in this shape on this line. So it would be all the x values from here to here. And the range would include all the y values from here all the way up to here. So all of these coordinate pairs, the x and y values on this line, 
will give us a domain and range. So the U-shape you just saw is called a parabola. Parabolas are shapes created by quadratic equations. Now if you remember, quadratic equations just follow the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. It's quadratic because the largest exponent here for a variable is 2. So generally when quadratic equations follow this form, some of these numbers actually tell us something about the parabola. So for instance, a, which comes in front of the x squared term, tells you whether the parabola opens up or down. If a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. The c, or the only number that's not tied to a variable, will tell us the y-intercept. So in this case, c is positive because the parabola intersects the y-axis up here above the 0, 0 origin point. Down here, the c has to be negative because it intersects the y-axis on the negative part of the axis. You can also rewrite a quadratic equation in the form y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. When the quadratic equation that you're dealing with is rewritten in this form, the a value is still telling you the same thing, whether the parabola opens up or down based on whether it's positive or negative. However, the hk here will give you the vertex point. The vertex point can be the lowest point on a parabola so in this case here, or the highest point of a parabola, in this case here. The vertex can kind of be thought of as a midpoint for the parabola. On the test, you may encounter certain questions asking you to reflect or translate functions or graphs. For example, here we have a parabola y equals f of x being reflected over the x-axis. What this means is if you were to take this as a piece of paper and fold it along the x-axis, this curve and this curve would match up perfectly. The same can be said over here, except we're going from this side on the right and reflecting it over to the left. And you could fold an imaginary piece of paper over the y-axis, and this parabola and this parabola would line up perfectly. In order to reflect this graph on the left over the x-axis, all you need to do is run a negative through the outside of a function. And as you can see here, in order to reflect a graph over the y-axis, all you need to do is run negatives through the values inside the parentheses of the f of x. So in this case, f of negative x. Moving on to translating functions, here we have a parabola x squared. In order to move this parabola up by a certain number of units, all you need to do is add that number of units to the outside of the function. So for instance, here we have x squared. If we wanted to move this parabola up the y-axis one unit, we would just add one to the outside, making it x squared plus one. In order to move it down, all you need to do is subtract it by one to move this parabola down one unit. Now to move the parabola left one unit, all we need to do is substitute the x value inside the parentheses with x plus one, meaning we'll get x plus 1 squared. And here to move to the right, all you need to do is subtract one unit. So that's the end of the video. Here are some questions if you'd like to go over some more stuff on functions, graphs, parabolas, quadratics, and translating and reflecting graphs. Feel free to leave any questions and comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you found the video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe.